Hello, I'm Brandi DeQuinn here at the SPCA of Northern Nevada, joined by Allison and Liz. And today we're talking about aromatherapy. So this is something you guys use here at the SPCA. We do. Um, for the last couple of months, actually, we have been kind of testing it out because, you know, our animals here, a lot of times we don't know what they've come here with. You know what I mean? We don't know their history, but it can be, um, even though we create a very loving environment, of course, that we can for our animals here, it can also be tough, you know, to be in a kennel and to not be in a warm home with a family. So we try to do as many things as we can to make our animals comfortable and safe and feeling good. So we started using um, essential oils, which, you know, I kind of liken it to, you know, anytime you smell something from your past that brings good feelings, oh, yeah. you know, like yeah. think about grandma's cookies. You know, when uh -huh. you smell cookies in a kitchen, it takes you back to a really good place, right? Uh -huh. So we hope that these oils can kind of take our animals to a good place. Um, what we have in here actually is lavender, which can be very soothing. And um, Stuart was commenting earlier that I'm like sitting here all relaxed. You are, you seem very <laughs> relaxed. I think we're all. I have this lavender <laughs> scent coming. So, you know, we have some of our dog walkers that use lavender when they're walking the dogs. So then they're kind of associating that scent with having a human around them and being loved and cared for. Um, we have these in our dog kennels and in our cat colonies. Um, and there's been a lot of research done around aromatherapy with animals and how effective it can actually be. And Liz has actually seen that firsthand with some of her own personal animals. So Liz, um, I'd like to talk to you about the benefits of aromatherapy and how it helps the animals. I've been using essential oils since 1991. And I discovered melaleuca or tea tree oil in Texas for fire ant stings. And that's what got me started on my road to using essential oils for myself personally and for my animals. So I used to make moisturizers and, and potions and lotions in the 90s for myself, but also realized they were very beneficial for my animals. So when I lived in Oregon, you had lots of fleas and ticks. I used a combination of citronella and eucalyptus. And actually, the last few years, I've been making my own horse fly spray for oh, my wow. horse, okay. which is with uh, eucalyptus. And I actually have a recipe, so anyone can contact me if you want mm -hmm. that. Uh, eucalyptus and citronella, a little distilled vinegar and so forth. And it's fabulous. It keeps them off. It's not long term. You have to kind of use it every day or every other day, but it's much less expensive to buy from tax stores. So I've been doing that. And then with my own animals, I have two rowdy puppies, although I have one here. She's very little. I'm going to demonstrate here, yeah. on this one. <laughs> but I use lavender on the dogs to kind of calm them down if they're getting really rowdy or I'm ready to go to sleep and they're not. All I have to do, and I'm going to show you uh, real quick here with Chloe. She's one of our, another SPCA puppy. And I've adopted her, but I'll just take one drop. So with animals, you want to use very, very little. They're much, so I'm going to do this, one drop. This is very, very potent. You want to rub it on your hands. You don't want to put it directly and definitely never in their eyes or mouth or anything like this. And then you can just, like this, just rub it on them and around like that. If you're making something specific for fleas, then you can make a little, you can dilute it more in carrier oil, especially with kitty cats. So they're so much more sensitive. And just like the front line and some of that stuff that people use, the toxic yeah. flea killer, you can put it right here. Oh, see, she wants to cuddle already. You can put it on their paws Just too? right here. You can put a little on their paws. Uh -huh. Most of them are just fine. So, so if they good. lick it, but research it a little. Some of them you, you definitely want to dilute with. You can use it from your own kitchen, olive oil. Otherwise, you can buy specific oil. So I just do that. And it looks shiny coat there. Yeah, that can, a little <laughs> extra can yeah. help. And it's nothing that's going to knock them out. It's not toxic. It's not dangerous. But it just kind of helps them be in a calm space themselves. So there's tons of things. You can use it on, like I said, the horses, dogs, cats cows, really any animal, I would just research it a little ahead of time for the specific thing. And actually, I actually had a couple things. You can use it for bleeding, bone pain. I used some on her. She had, came, uh, had a broken leg, calming them, which is what we're doing. Cancer, colds and coughs, uh, dermatitis, heart problems, stroke, 
Travel sickness, that's actually a good one. Earaches, ear infections, parasites, hoof rot for your horse, leg fractures, muscle tissue, wounds, all sorts of things. So uh, I would always try that first, which I have, before I go to something, you know, if that doesn't work, more uh, um, something different other than the essential oils. Yeah. Okay, so you said they're in the cat kennels and the dog kennels. Yes. Yeah, you know, you can use essential oils on your cats as well. Cats are way more sensitive in a lot of ways. <laughs> we always, you know, joke about our, our cats here. Um, so you do want to be really careful. And like Liz said, you know, do some research. There's a lot of veterinarians out there and a lot of websites about using essential oils specifically with animals. Um, we have used cinnamon here um, to help some of the dogs or cats that have some upper respiratory issues. Oh, wow. Um, but it, it can be just as beneficial for the cats, you know, and, and like I mentioned before, you know, we, we have rescue animals here. We don't know what they're dealing with. And so I think when you take an animal home with you and they might be dealing with some anxiety or things like that, we actually did a class here with some of our volunteers and staff about essential oils. And one of our volunteers had a dog that would not go in the car. It was a rescue animal, and who knows what happened to make that dog so fearful of the car. And she started using a different blend called Serenity, and um, that's actually a blend that Caesar Milan uses when he oh, does training okay. as well. And now she can take her dog in the car. It's oh, wow. just amazing. She puts a little scarf on him or a little handkerchief and just puts a little bit of the, of the essential oil on there so that he can smell it and we'll get in the car just fine. It's, it's incredible. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so besides dogs and cats, you can use this on other animals. Yes, yes. Do a little research yeah. like Allison said, and there are sites and places for information where it'll tell you to dilute it, the, you know, a ratio maybe, and that kind of thing, specific to what you're trying to resolve. Horses and cows. Mm -hmm. and oh, definitely, yes. You can use lavender. I used lavender on a horse I had that was nervous about getting its feet trimmed, uh -huh. its hooves, and you just do a little lavender. I also had a, a, a barefoot trimmer that used to do that. Put a little lavender on the horse's head, just right here, just very light, or you can break, put it on your glove, let the horse sniff it, and it can be almost instant, instant how they just, <sighs> Well, I can tell right here. I know. See, she's going to sleep. I, I wish you would turn around, but she's uh, snuggling in. Yeah, so it's well, already I working. I to mention, too, so, I mean, I, I use essential oils in my personal life as well with my children and myself. And with animals, what's so incredible, though, is they don't have any preconceived notions like humans do. You know, we're like, oh, gosh, that stuff isn't going to work. How would that work? We need to go take conventional medication. Um, but with animals... They don't have that. They don't have that mind blockage that we do. They're just like, whatever works, whatever smells, you know, if it works, it works. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so incredible to see it work so quickly um, with animals. And it's, you know, it, it can be very inexpensive and you can see a wonderful, wonderful change in your animals. So are there certain classes you guys have so they could find out more about aromatherapy yeah, or other well, things? The next aromatherapy class that we'll have here at the SPCA is in May, on May 21st. Um, but we are doing a whole series of classes, kind of with some different alternative medicines or other ways that you can care for your animals that you might not think about. So our next class um, is Tuesday, April 30th. So it's coming up this Tuesday at 5.30 here at the SPCA, and it's about animal dentistry. A lot of people don't think about taking care of their animals' teeth, and that is um, a very important thing to do. So we actually have a veterinarian from Lakeside Animal Hospital coming to teach the class, so she is an expert in it, and we would love for people to come and join us. And, and you cool. can experience the lavender, too. We'll have oh, the, I know. Yeah. We're we'll so relaxed lavender right going at the class. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so what do you think of these? Do you have all these in your house, too? At home, yes, in yeah. my office, and then we have them at the shelter. Do you have They're any wonderful. cool special stories about your office and these? or any? Well, the office, actually, because the other puppy I have is a Border Collie mix, uh -huh. and he's much rowdier, so when he has to stay confined in my office all day, I definitely have that going, and the whining and asking to go out all the time mm -hmm. completely stops. Wow. So it's not, you're not drugging your animals, it's just a... <laughs> It's just putting their head in a different mindset, and they're like, okay, I'm just going to lay back here with my chew toy and relax. It's 
awesome. I know. <laughs> no, it's amazing. They're really amazing. So maybe if you guys have, yeah, a hyperactive dog or separation anxiety or just yeah. want to take the edge off, try some. Put just a little bit, a little dab on their on their bed or on their pillow or where they sleep, and you know that that can help as well. So for more information about this, um, go to the class. Go, come to the class. You can go to um, spcanevada.org and learn a little bit more too. Give Liz a call. She can let you know more about the oils too if you have specific questions or you know want to try it with your animal. Um, we would we would love we would love it. We want happy animals everywhere. <laughs> that sounds good. And then and then when you, they adopt from here, they can go home and take the whole lavender thing with them. And... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will always help people and guide them on the basics of what to do when you get home with your own animal. Sounds perfect. Give it a shot. Mm -hmm. All right, Liz and Allison. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you. We're all so relaxed. I know. <laughs>